and the green light by onboard Planola. That's all for now. More in an hour. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. You'll find our lowest car insurance quotes online, guaranteed. Scattered heavy showers with the occasional thundery downpour, especially across the northern half of the country. The showers will die off tonight with long clear spells developing, lowest temperatures of 10 to 13 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Welcome back. So John and Dublin asked the question, as ever, the listeners have the answers. Hi lads, how did Liverpool qualify to play in the Charity Shield? A team with all the domestic trophies, Man City, versus a team with no trophy, Liverpool. Why not City versus Chelsea or Watford as the domestic cup finalists? Colin Kavner in Arklow. Ah lads! Three exclamation marks. Colin very exercised. The Charity Shield was Capitals always the winners of the FA Cup versus the league champions. In the event of a team doing the double, it used to be the league winners versus the FA Cup runners-up. But... That seems to have changed in recent years. Cheers, Colm Kavanagh. Didn't fully give us the answer, Colm, but we appreciate the text. Someone else went one better than you. Lads, the Community Shield was always the league champions versus cup winners. But in the 90s, when United won the double multiple times, they changed it because the cup runners-up against the double winners was not an especially good game. So they changed it to have the league champions against the league runners-up. Ergo, better game. And the official... Uh, line is the uh, Community Shield, English football's annual match, blah, 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 blah. If the Premier League champions also win the FA Cup, then the league runners-up provide the opposition. So it's that simple. If you do the double, if you win the FA Cup, then it's league runners-up. Hence, uh, Liverpool against Man City. We'll have this conversation again in about 12 months' time. Thanks for the text. We'll move on to GAA. We have Kieran Donahue with us and Billy Joe Padden. You're there, lads. We are. Hey, Joe. Thanks for joining us. So well, let's take a backward glance at the Super 8s for a moment because everybody is um, given their tuppence worth and how they went in year two. The biggest issue I suspect a lot of people have, Billy Joe, is that we, um, well, look, the dead rubbers were um, grim at the weekend in Oban especially and, and probably unavoidable. I'm not sure if there is a way to avoid them. But uh, this recovery time, like... Mayo, six days to recover, one of those is going to be a travel day as well. Like, like This is a dreadful thing, really, given the magnitude of the game. You train from December, January. I accept there's probably a price to be paid if you lose a game early on in the championship and you head for the qualifier circuit and, you know, tough luck, you've got to deal with it. That, that is the price to be paid. But if you have come through the various pitfalls to make an All-Ireland semi-final and you've been training since December, January, then... To have this kind of preparation for a semi-final is just wrong. Like It's almost a matter the GPA should step in on and say, look, it's too big a game for lads who pick up a knock on a Saturday to have their whole preparation for a semi-final completely disrupted. Uh, that, you know, that's one of the big things they're going to have to change sooner rather than later. I think so. I think it's totally insufficient. And it's not, it's not just like people can point to, say, Mayo or to own circumstance and say, well, if you'd gone and won your provincial title, you wouldn't have had to play all those games. You know, well, It'll be six and seven weeks, I think, when we get to the weekend. But you look at Dublin as well. Dublin have only six days uh, to prepare for um, an All-Ireland team final, and they have done absolutely everything that has been asked of them in superb fashion. So it, it, it is just totally insufficient. It's not fair on supporters either, uh, trying to organise trips and travel and all that, so particularly if you're travelling from the south of the county or even Mayo or Kerry or places far away. Um, it's just something that has to be looked at. And I think it has to be looked at in the frame of the overall structure of the championship because I think many people have said that the Super 8, the idea of playing league games at the end or maybe sort of somewhere in the middle of your championship is not really, it's not the norm in any other yeah. sport that I'm aware of. And do, I don't think it leads to the better competition because I think if the league games were happened earlier you would uh, in the in the championship you would have teams that would be able to get into a bit of a rhythm you may have weaker counties that would get a bit of momentum and be able to put up better showing than if they were to make it mm. to a last eight format where you had quarterfinal semi-final and so on Kieran, in terms of how we're feeling about the super eights the other thing people have mentioned is the crow park games don't really work so say we get rid of the crow park games that would be another improvement for year three any other any other bits and pieces you'd like to see tweaked or changed yeah, uh, I think possibly getting to play, um, if they can't do anything with the calendar, which which I hope they can, but if they can't, I'd at least prefer to play the three games in a row in the group and get my two weeks if I qualified for an All-Ireland semi-final. I think, that it's, I think that's 
I think I think every manager and every player would say, yeah, we'll take that deal. We'll go with the hard three weeks in a row and kind of have that four or five days after that to kind of rest and maybe a weekend as a training camp um, to get your group in together for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday with, mm. the, with the build up for the week ahead and then let them wind down again, do your Wednesday night session and get ready to go to Crow Park. I don't think any players or management would have an issue with that. But then you're trying the three games in a row, mm. uh, which is tough on players as well. But, you know, I think with the fitness levels and the preparation that these players put in, um, you know, I think you I think, I think, think you can play three games in a row. But again, you probably need a week off before that. So the, the qualifiers would need a week mm. off before that three games. And you need a week afterwards. Um, so there's probably another week has to find they have to find another week in the calendar somewhere if they're going to mm. stick with, with, with the proposed format but yeah like you know it is tough in Dublin but like Dublin get the perks as well of, of playing two home games so you know them having a six day you know turnaround versus uh, Mayo um, it, it is tough because as as Billy Joe said they won their provincial championship they've done everything the right way and just yeah. get a bit of punishment um, so look it's 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 just the way it is now, and it's probably an over it's kind of a, an oversight by them when they were doing this, and they made tweaks last year, Joe, and I hope they make the necessary yeah. tweaks as you've men- mentioned, and if they do that, you know, I think we're still, I think we're still benefiting from uh, uh, better games, like we had a lot of good games this year in the Super Eights, not as uh, we had more better we had better games this year than we did last season in it, um, so look, I, you know, I think it's going to improve all the time and. Uh, and if it is left in next year, if you do get you know your eight teams in, I'm sure there's going to be great games next year. Whereas that quarter final weekend in August was always a kind of uh, you know it was a it, it was a non-event really with a lot of it poor crowds going um, and the odd big game maybe if Dublin are playing yeah. a Kerry or Mayo would have been always the big one, but yeah. the rest of them would have been played two on a Saturday, one on a Sunday, one on a Monday or whatever way it was, and mm. the bigger games would be stacked at the end of the week. But I think this way, I think I think the scenes in Castle Bar last week, the scenes blowing Killarney. Um, the scenes over with even with Ross Common against Tyrone was a game we covered, and uh, the atmosphere was unbelievable at it. So I think these atmospheres are good for players and fans. And there's no real way, Kieran, to avoid the odd dead rubber. No, I, you know, I, dead rubbers are going to happen. You know, and 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 I know Tyrone and people are kind of you know Tyrone and Dublin was. But, you know, for, for a manager, in a way, like you're getting every fella that's trained his arse off all year, you're getting to throw him out into, um, into, a, into a highly competitive game mm. in front of a big crowd to see what he's made of. And, you know, I think Dublin, you know, found a few the last day that, you know, all of a sudden you'd say, geez, if the game's in the melting pot, no, we know we can go with these guys. And, you know, I think that's good for the morale of a group as well. If you're lucky enough, if you're in the position where you go win your first two games and you're able to do that in your last game, you know, whether it's whether it's a dead rubber or whether it's a game, and you want to just try and rest fellas and play the rest of your panel who've been working really hard all year as a, as a reward, you know it has to be. You know it's it's good for the respective managers and management teams. I would say for the harmony in the group to to get everyone to get a gallop. I'm sure that would really re-energize the group rather than mm. fellas sitting down and the usual guys playing all the time. Billy Joe, we've a brilliant semi-final lineup. You know Kerry Tyrone and mm-hmm. Mayo Dublin. You know Mayo Dublin, pretty much the rivalry of the last decade. Seven times they've played, the Dubs have won four, Mayo won, there have been two draws as well. One of the more common points I've heard made over the last couple of days, and it ties in with the issue of the six-day turnaround, is that if Mayo had two weeks to bunker away and come up with a plan and patch up the knocks and come back, they'd have a right crack at Dublin. But six days, travelling up on the Friday, it's too much to ask. I think so. I think they're going to have a right crack anyway. They've, they've put too much into this season already to, you know, to, I suppose, roll over. And definitely with the history they've had against Dublin, where they have come so close, and there is a genuine uh, uh, rivalry there where there is maybe even some dislike between some of the players. So they're going to give it absolutely everything they have. But you, know, you don't have to look too far back to see where Mayo have struggled in this situation. They put an awful lot into beating Galway in Limerick a couple of weeks ago and then six days or seven days after that they had a really flat performance down in Kerry against a a very good Kerry team on that day so it's going to be extremely difficult for them to match the energy levels and the intensity levels that they know they can reach Mm. but just can they do it in such a short space of time with mounting injuries all the time and with their team getting a little bit older than maybe they were three Mm. years ago Mm. Kieran, do you feel the same way? Uh, I I I don't know. Um, I think I think the game Saturday is no harm for Mayo. It, it, I, I, obviously, in an ideal world, you'd love to kind of rest everybody and make sure everybody is right. But 
I just felt like they got an awful lot of momentum below in, in Castle Bar the last day. And I would feel that the group are, you know, bar the guys that are probably sweating against injury, the three or four guys that are, you know, Dermot O'Connor is, is possibly, he'll play. If if, the, if they tape his arm together, he'll probably want to play in that game. Matty Oran will have another week. Tom Parsons will have another week. They, to say that they would have been on the panel, would have they would have got a bit done in, in the lead up to the last game. So they're going to have another bit in the tank this week. Um and momentum is a funny thing, and and I think Mayo have have gotten an awful lot of it out of that game the last day. And Mayo, Mayo will always rise it, you know. In fairness, any time they've played Dublin, you know they may not have won, but they never didn't perform. And mm. I think they'll give a big performance on Sunday. Mm. Whether it's good enough, I wouldn't be so sure. But you know, as the week builds on, um, it's 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 a one potentially that they could just nick um, from under the nose of everybody and and put in the biggest surprise that we've seen in an awful long t- time. They have the ability to do that. They have the players if they perform really well, and their key players, like we saw last week, outperform their opposite numbers. You know, uh, Mayo have a chance on 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 uh, Saturday, and uh, but you know it's a, it's a huge mountain to climb to try and go to beat uh, to go beat this Dublin team after all of them having a massive rest this week. Mm. Um, and you're sure you know they'll they'll have seen the performance by some of their teammates, and they'll be. They'll be making sure that their semi-final performance is a big one. That if they win, that they're on the team for the final. So yeah. uh, it's a big ask. But you know, this Mayo team, you know, they always rise when they're playing the really good times, or really good teams, and they often lower the level when they're playing teams below them. They'll always just do enough. Um, you know, Donegal were good. They weren't missing Neil McGee. They weren't missing Jason McGee in the middle of the field. They were missing a few other fellas. You know, and Ball Gallagher obviously is a huge loss. So, you know, they were kind of under strength. But, you know, this this was a real game of, of, of honour the last day and both mm. teams going at it. And, you know, Mayo have to be way more clinical in front of goals. And, you know, but they have the ability to do that. They have very dangerous forwards. And if they are very clinical in front of goals the next day yeah. and their half-back access and their middle of the field access with Aidan O'Shea, who's a classes at the moment, if they get him... Colin Boyle, uh, Lee Keegan, and Paddy Durkin. If they're winning ball and going forward a lot and putting Dublin on the back foot, mm. you know you saw what Cork did to Dublin at times, and I know Dublin wouldn't have been up for that like they will be the next day. Yeah. But they, they, you know, that running game that Mayo have is very similar to what Cork do really well, and Mayo are as, as good, if not better, than them at it. So, you know, Higgins back the next day, you know, he was a bit harsh in his tackle um, the last day, and I'm sure he won't do that again next uh, next week, but. You know, they 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 look forward to Joe. They will. I know. That, that I would say within that group, they're saying bring it on. Yeah, are Dublin um, susceptible then to that direct running, Kieran? Because what everyone talks about is the Dublin full back line under the high ball as one of their great weaknesses. Colin Keyes rightly pointed out today in the Irish Independent thought it was a good point that uh, for the first time under Jim Gavin, Dublin have reached a semi final without conceding a goal from play. So you know, I guess every team is susceptible to a big ball. Uh, lobbed in to some big fellow like yourself you know it's just not an easy situation um, to deal with so there's that but they haven't actually conceded from play Cork did cause them trouble running at them is that is that an area you think we're going to see? Well it, it'll be an area like it shows you we're, we're looking at these big weak, weaknesses in Dublin <laughs> and that, you, that you should run at them in the high ball and they haven't conceded a goal from play Yeah. Um, so I'm sure they're laughing at all of us with, with, with that commentary but look at the end of the day um, you know that that half back line that that uh, that Mayo possess, like Paddy Durkin, when I say he was immense the last day, he was just unbelievable. Yeah. Like he, you know, he it was more than just the three points as well. Like it was shutting down, it was hard hitting, it was it was even running to be an option. Sometimes when he didn't get the ball, but he's going so fast, he's taking bodies away with them. And you know, and Dublin haven't really got a test this year yet. You know, mm. and. Uh, and Mayo will test their pulse. You know, everything will have to go right for Mayo. You know, they'll have to they'll have to take all their chances. They'll have to be way more efficient in front of goal. They can't get any black cards. Aidan O'Shea is going to need to have a monstrous game out in the middle against Fenton. Um, but can all that happen? It can. And mm. if it does, Mayo will run Dublin close on 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 um, on Saturday. But at the same time, saying that. Uh, you know, it just depends. Like, if Dublin turn up and they're really at it, you know, yeah. it could be a long day. But I, I do just feel that that Mayo might just, you know, put in the performance of a summer here, and it might take him close. And you never know when you get up, when you get in against somebody close who hasn't been there uh, in a long time. Mm. You know, it could rattle them. But again, this Dublin team have never have never really come up short when they're leading. 
No, it's true. Billy Joe, curious for your thoughts on some of the matchups, you know, because that was such a factor at the weekend. Mick Brearty marked by Barrett, uh, McHugh with Dirk and Lee Keegan and Michael Murphy. Although, you know, Murphy had a very good game, but Keegan, we know what he can do when it comes to man marking. And then Jim Gavin has a few different pieces to play around with. Jimmy Connolly played at Enoma and, at, you know, the usual nice touches, as you would expect, but it, there was nothing like the intensity that we're going to see at Crow Park, but it certainly means he can name a hell of a dummy team and give uh, James Horan and friends something to think about. Uh, Keegan, Mark Kilkenny in the 2017 final, and then you've got the likes of Mannion and O'Callaghan uh, for company as well, knocking around, and you're going to have to get matchups right there. Do you get someone to man mark Jack McCaffrey, I wonder, is a question. I'm sure they might discuss it this week above in Castle Bar. So yeah. talk, talk to us about some of the matchups that you're thinking about at the moment. Well, I think you, you go back to Lee Keegan and you go back to Kieran Kilkenny straight away because K- Lee Keegan was exceptional in one of, in, in some of those games against Kieran Kilkenny. And Kieran Kilkenny's response to that of being kind of outmarked in the game has been exceptional because he's gone and added something to his game where he is not just a playmaker all the time. Because sometimes it can be easy to man mark a playmaker because he's running around looking for loads of possessions that mightn't be you know, hard-won possessions and playmaking whereas Kilkenny has gone and adapted and now he can do a stint in the full forward line and be very dangerous there but I suppose the benefit for Keegan is that Keegan is comfortable playing in the full back line well he's not as comfortable but he's fairly comfortable playing in the full back line I think as well did you give serious consideration and I think I would go with it of playing Paddy Durkin on Jack McCaffrey and just letting those two you know, greyhounds chase each other up and down Co Park and <laughs> in many ways I think it'd be it's a spectacle to see go and see those two matchups in themselves. And if Mayo are to win the this game, I think they'd need Mayo to those two matchups would need to go significantly in Mayo's favour. And then you'd want to survive in some of the other areas. Chris Barrett and Brendan Harrison played very, very well against Donny Gall and you're looking at Con O'Callaghan and, and, and you know Dean Rock or uh, Paul Ma- uh, Mannion probably more yeah. likely as you say there they'll have to fig- figure out who's best suited for each one of those and then the big question is Dublin have Brian Fenton and will you decide I don't think Mayo will put Aidan O'Shea on him I think that they might take a risk and, and see if Matty Ruan has 40 minutes of, of running ability in him and he's a great athlete can he cover Fenton for that period and, and see if then if he can Maybe Jeremy O'Connor might have 30 minutes in his legs towards the end. Mm. But I really think it has to start with what Mayo do with Jack McCaffrey and Kieran Kilkenny. And the two men for that job will be Paddy Durkin and Lee Keegan, I imagine. Right. Um, final thoughts on those matchups, Kieran? Yeah, I don't know. I, um, I'd, I'd nearly like to see Paddy Durkin kind of playing it at right half back on a Howard or whatever and just using, just taking Howard out of the game by driving forward constantly. I think you can get away with a McLaughlin. Um, on on Jack McCaffrey, he's played as a sweeper, like Kevin McLaughlin, and you know he could play as a kind of as a kind of defensive forward, picking up ball. He's a good foot passer through the lines, um, so he might he might do that as well. Um, it's it's it looks Jack McCaffrey. You know, I just don't know what he's going to do. What he's going to do, and he's going to make his runs. Um, but I think I think I don't know what Dirk can become nearly too obsessed because. Jack does a lot of kind of blind running down the pitch, whether he has the ball or not. You have to follow him. Whereas McHugh would be more kind of crafty, kind of, um, you know, you'd have to really keep your eye on him. He can pop up in different areas where Jack goes on these bursts and he's gone. Um, and I think Kevin McLaughlin can stay with him for a bit of them and and try and force him down the line. I think you, I, I would like to see Mayo try and keep uh, that half back line, um, just line him out wherever, and Keegan picks up Kilkenny and everybody else goes and and stays in their spots and tries to tries to hurt. Dublin rather than trying to kind of react to Dublin or defend Dublin mm. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing spectacle. I, the word is by the way the weather is going to be fairly dreadful, it's going to be wet I think it was Dick Clerk and I saw yesterday in the Irish Independent, he was saying Billy Joe that suits Mayo, a bit of rain is good for Mayo Definitely, slows down that Dublin middle third makes that handling of the ball a, a little less crisp I think it'll play into the hands of particularly Shamie O'Shea and Aidan O'Shea, they're so physical around the middle of the field, probably not as mobile as the Dublin pairing. And I think that some of the male forwards in themselves are maybe not the quickest. I know Killian O'Connor is usually pretty sharp in, in wet conditions. Mm. Um, Darren Cohn is not the quickest, but he's a good outside shooter. Sometimes in wet conditions, he can get shots like that. Yeah. And even when you're bringing Andy Moore off the bench, a fellow with his cleverness, he's so quick on a breaking ball or a, 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 a slip by a defender is using his awareness that, yeah, I think I, I, I think most male people, including myself, would be praying for rain on Saturday. Right, OK. And so David Clark is back in the frame. Who starts? <laughs> That's a difficult one. Um, David Clark uh, is the superior goalkeeper, but if it's wet, 
and if which is promised to be, I think that James might go with Robbie Henley just to play long kickouts pretty much throughout. Okay, Kieran, who would you start? Uh, um, it's probably a tricky one, but again, going on, on the bit of confidence from last week, I'd probably just stick with with with, with Henley. Um, and we don't know, you know, uh, you know what knock he, what what knock, what knock David Clark picked up. So I'd be just I'd be going with Henley and try and keep it keep it going. He was doing a really good long kick out. I was. They hit. They tried to hit Kevin McLaughlin a few times. You know, I I, I wasn't getting what they were doing, but I, I I get what they were going straight down the middle over everybody that mm. was up for Donegal, um, and it was often to kind of a half forward. But you know, I just didn't think McLaughlin was the right man to be out underneath them. He's very good at getting breaks. So if they can just maybe change that, and if Dublin do do the press up, um, maybe Clark can just go along to Aidan O'Shea and see if he can do a kind of Michael Murphy and just knock it on to uh, Paddy Durkin or Lee Keegan going after him. I'm sure Mayo will work on, on a few kind of uh, look, Mayo are going to have to score goals to win this game. Yeah. They're going to have to hope it's raining. They're going to have to hope Dublin play bad. All them things need to work for them. That's yeah. just the facts of yeah. it. But that, that has happened to teams before up there. Um, a wet day in Crow Park is hard to play. Um, and, you know, I, I think Henley going long out the middle is if Dublin are really in that high press. Um, and they know they're going long and they can get their, their defenders to go running off of that guy that's competing in the middle if they know what's all happening. I think that can be a way. Okay. In the weekend. Uh, Henley's good on the jabby kickouts as well and he can come up and take a long freeze. So there's a few pluses to him that I'd probably just go with him and give him the nod over, over Clark. And um, before we get on to Kerry Tyrone then, just a word on Donegal, Kieran, because you know for so much of the season we were expecting big things. And Michael Murphy was very honest afterwards. He said, like, we just, you know, kicked way too many wides. He said, myself included, we just didn't have the right stuff today, you know. And what, what was your sense of them when they got to this real business end of the championship against the Steel and Experience and Mayo? Because yeah, they'll come away incredibly disappointed, not least with the wides they kicked as well. Yeah, I, I think the Kerry and Donegal game was two young teams kind of finding their way, really, in essence. Uh, and then... Donegal, their, their next game is have to go to Castle Bar to play a bunch of war dogs that have been there and done it for the last 10 years, have taken on massive disappointments, always come back, have the mental edge to keep coming back and keep trying to, to, to bring Sam across the Shannon and bring it back to Mayo for the first time in an awful long time. So I would say that, you know, uh, they just want for what are a very hardened veteran team and that's why, they, that's why they'll relish the chance of getting a, a crack at the Dublin and I think honestly they do a better job against Dublin than Donegal would because of the same fact as mm. if Donegal went up to play Dublin next week they have so many, Dublin have so many hardened veterans and are so experienced team that they'd probably expose Donegal that along with the fact that Donegal wrote without their two best defenders, without their best midfielder, mm. um, and you know they had they had other knocks around the place that that suffered. And Jamie Brennan kind of fell, fell off the, you know he he, he was going so well mm. and then, you know got marked out of it by Tom Sullivan above in Crow Park for Kerry and you know you, it was just tough. He didn't have a great day at the office the next day. So a young player like that, one bad day can knock his confidence. But they'll all come back better next year but I just think it was a year or two too early for Donegal to be honest with you Joe Okay, Billy Joe Kerry against Tyrone on the Sunday it's a 16th semi-final for Mickey Hart which is kind of extraordinary uh, David Clifford's going to be fit despite a few back spasms at the weekend so he's fine there are fears there are over James O'Donoghue he is struggling uh, Kerry still managed 2-13 from play at Pork Talchon um, and then Tyrone obviously 15 changes against Dublin and it's very hard to draw any big conclusions from that game so what are we looking at here how's this shaping up for you Billy Joe well, I think you look at it and you're looking for it to see where which team will have the advantage. And I think that the clear difference between the two teams is in uh, the full forward lines. Whereas you had Carl McShane, who's you know has been exceptional all year and been really, really good. But you just see there's much more depth in the Kerry full forward line. And with you know Clifford will come back in there. Paul Ganey is in better form. Killian Splann has been really, really sharp the last two. Uh, games that Kerry have had and they just seem to be and that's probably leading to a, a situation where they're scoring all those scores from play and that's without even mentioning somebody like Sean O'Shea who was absolutely brilliant mm. in NAB and last weekend mm. um, so I think if there's an edge to one team in the wide open spaces in Crow Park it will be in the Kerry forward line will be good enough to get enough scores at the same time you see vulnerability in probably both defences at times and I think a lot of maybe Tyrone's kind of lethargic and uh, disjointed play in the qualifiers had as much to do with fatigue playing week after week after week. So I'm expecting with the extra rest they got from playing 
fringe players last weekend that they'll have a whole load of energy to put in a good defensive showing. But I just still think that that it, Kerry will have to that edge in terms of scoring power. Mm. Uh, but that will be no use to them if they don't get a, a consistent showing around the middle of the field. And David Moore was back in the team. He was really, really good. But you just sometimes you look at Kerry and you think, you know, they just need more consistency in terms of carrying the ball through that area. They need Paul Murphy in the game more often. You know, Jack Sherwood came on in, in Avon and handled a lot of ball. You know, Adrian Spillane probably wasn't as influential as maybe he was in the game against Mayo down in, in Clarence. So they'll need a step up in that area of the field in order to dominate enough possession to really feed those bullets for those forwards. Kieran, I presume the current Kerry team don't have any hang-ups when they see a Tyrone jersey. Um, I, I don't think so. I think Kerry have been very comfortable against Tyrone probably since... Uh, since 2008, really, you know, I think I think Kerry have we won in 2012 and 15 as well in the semi final. Um, so no, I don't think there's any hang ups there. I don't think any of these players would have been there in 2008. So um, possibly David Moore might have been on the bench. Um, so uh, it's it's a Killian Young too, maybe. So they're they're be the only two guys. But you know, I think you know there's no there's no hang ups from from this bunch of Kerry players about about the Tyrone jersey. They are going to get a. They are going to get a, their toughest game of the year so far. And, you know, I don't know what Kerry will do. I don't know will Kerry go a bit, you know, like they did in the league game belong to Larney. Like, Kerry were very open at stages against me the last day. Um, you know, rakes of space inside their 40, 65 at times to 2-1-2 two two with Tyg Morley and Jason Foley. And, you know, if, if Tyrone have Carl McShane and, and, and Matty Donnelly and the boys have no bit of help or protection, you know, that's that's a tough ask. Um so I don't know what Kerry are going to do. Are they going to hold and be really patient and do what kind of Cork did to, to Tyrone in the first half, which mm. was be very measured, don't take it into contact, be very safe with the ball, especially early on, as you said there earlier on, especially if it's raining and it's wet. Um, you know, but Tyrone, you know, Tyrone, are, that week's rest is going to be massive for them because they're such a power-packed running team. Mm. The fact that all those lads have got a week off, the Sluddens, you know, um, powerful, powerful runners, Matty Donnelly, obviously. So they're they're going to they're going to pose a, a real a real ask of Kerry on on Sunday. But look, that's the joy of it. They're going to be two absolute banging semi finals, mm. and uh, it's kind of how Kerry approach it. I, I I I'm not sure they'll kind of go with the same gun ho stuff they are. I don't know as Peter maybe been keeping, you know, a, 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 a kind of a more. Uh, Maybe the bigger games come the end of the summer. I don't know. Maybe they do go gun ho and they and they do apply the press that they've been doing. Um, but it's going to make for brilliant viewing, uh, no matter what happens. But like the carry full forward, I don't know how strong they are. But you know, when you're a full forward player against this Tyrone system that they're currently playing, it doesn't really matter how good you are at times. It's is if you can find the space mm. to go running at, at at a man when there's four or five fellas head hunting you every time you get the ball. So. Um, you know, they'll have to be very slick with the ball, they'll have to be very quick with their hands, they'll have to stay out of contact, um, they'll have to do a lot of kind of off the shoulder running, uh, even if fellas don't get the ball to take men away to allow the ball carrier to maybe take on these men one on one then. Mm. But they will certainly be working, I would say be working on that, uh, probably tonight at training and and just maybe playing a kind of a slight possession game against the against a lot of defenders, um, to try and just get that into the head. Because Cork did it for the first half an hour, they were brilliant. Mm. They were measured. They were controlled. They had a set piece off a kick out um, that night. Um, could could Peter Keane look at something like that? Do they have something like that up their sleeve? I don't know. I might be so sure. Um, but you yeah. know, you're that's the one time you're going to get Tyrone six on six is from the throw, and if you can win it and you can get an early ball in, or some fellas have, if fellas have an idea of what the plan is, if we win a throw in, um, that's the only time you're going to get really exposed. That's the only time Tyrone defensively are exposed one on one, and they don't like. They're not great one on one defenders, but they're brilliant defenders mm. in the crowd because they all have each other's backs. Jesus, there's not much time to sort all that out, is there? Like even detail of what you do with the throw in. It's it's, one, know, it's, it's, it's such a pity for the for it's such a pity for the spectacle. Both games that they haven't had like the two weeks to work each other yeah. out, not to repeat ourselves yeah, I mean, again. No, you're right though, but that two weeks would allow you to maybe come up with one or two things on a training and that's why a training holiday for amateur players or that little kind of weekend camp is so good for amateur mm. players because all of a sudden you get them away from family and friends and, and pressures at, at home to kind of be in with the team, to be coming up with ideas and executing ideas and you know, you can definitely say that Cork had worked on that kick out. When did they work on it before Tyrone? I don't know. Was it the week beforehand? Um, did they have it? Did they talk about these things earlier on in the year and, mm. and and try them and say, look, 
if we win this throw in and, and the three half hours run out for the break, we might get a one on one inside and then we laugh and try and get in. And it happened. They got a goal after 14 seconds and it set Cork up for a really comfortable first half. So, yeah. you know, you're looking at everything these days as a management team and, uh, you know, have they something like this done previously mm. and have it in the locker? I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if, but if, if, they did, if they did have it in the locker, it'd be a nice time to, to throw it out because I think that's what a lot of semi finals are going to turn into over the next few years with these Super 8s. Is, is having stuff that you can get through the Super 8s without going to. And if mm. you need to go to them in the Super 8s, you go to them. But having them up your sleeve for that All-Ireland semi-final, ready to unleash them and that your team are confident in them because you've worked with them in training over the previous six or seven months. So, yeah, um, yeah I do, we'll see. It's, it's, it'll be interesting to see, yeah. I have about a minute here. So predictions, Billy Joe, give us your two. Um, Dublin and Kerry. Kieran. Uh I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold, Joe. I need. I need more time. I need more time. Um, <laughs> that's not fair. I, 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 that, that's I, I, not fair, Joe. Yeah, I, I didn't know that was an option. I didn't know this was an option. When did this start? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it for my prediction slot and shot clock on Thursday morning. So um, <laughs> my, my 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 predictions have been going well on that. So I might hold because I might have a big announcement on who I'm going with in the first game. Oh, jeez, the, the na- <laughs> a nation holds its breath. My God, how will we last? Uh, come here. Uh, something I'd say you'll come back to on, on Thursday. Thirty seconds if you can. Paul Galvin as Wexford manager. I I can't wait to see this. What are you expecting? Um, I'm not sure really, to be honest with you. Um, I just know that Paul's team will have a clear identity of how they were. You know, I, Paul's grown up in, you know, in, in Fenwick and, uh, you know, they played their football with a very kind of uh, a together united bunch, a small bunch, um, not many to pick from. Fellas play above themselves. They get the most out of each other. They're tough. They're intense. Um, and I'm sure he'll feed a lot off of that with Wexford because that's yeah. where you know Fenwick would always be the underdogs in a lot of these games you know obviously there's been games they've gone into with the likes of Fitzmaurice and Galvin and, and even Enda Galvin before that that they would have been favourites in North Kerry or a few championship games with with, with, with uh, Field Rangers or whatever but I think um, I think he'll have a lot of that kind of in them Joe I think he'll have a lot of kind of you know they'll know what they're playing for they'll know the story of Wexford football they'll know the history and tradition in there he'll try and tap into how successful they were early days and just to maybe bring a bit of identity back mm. to the county, and and obviously have them playing with that bit of a of a bit of a steely edge about them, and that bit of togetherness uh, that he would have played with all his life underage, and that's what he brought into Kerry. When you look at his what he was like in a Kerry jersey, Joe, it was basically what he learned from playing with all these fellas that were older than him in Fenui. Yeah, lads, great stuff, Kieran. We await your predictions. It's going to be uh, like I mean, the <laughs> countdown is on. This is phenomenal stuff. We'll start a clock in the corner of the screen. And Billy Joe, thanks Billy a million. Joe. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Off the ball on News Talk. Remember when we asked what a gazebo was, and you said it could be a lightweight garden shelter, a swift shelter, pop up tent, marquee, or party tent? Well, at omaracamping.com, we now custom brand industrial shelters for clubs, organizations, and businesses with your very own logo. And guess what it's called? Yep, it's a branded gazebo. Sorry to add to the confusion. Whatever you call a gazebo, we still call a happy customer. Omaracamping.com for tents and accessories. For every event, omaracamping.com have a tent. Do you have a TV license? Inspectors are calling to unlicensed homes and businesses. If you don't, that can mean prosecution and a fine of up to €1,000. It's the law, so get yours at tvlicense.ie or at any post office. Brought to you by the Government of Ireland. Ovens might not be the first thing that springs to mind when you think shiny new appliances. But have you tried the Samsung Dual Cook Flex at Appliances Delivered? Oh my God, it's fabulous. It has a flexible hinge door, so I can use it as two separate ovens, or I can open it up into one big oven when hosting dinner parties for my many fabulous celeb friends. I know who they are. Plus, it's self-cleaning and energy saving. Ha! And you thought ovens were boring. The Samsung built-in range available at appliancesdelivered.ie. With over 15,000 coolers available to hire or buy, HSS Hire has a cooling solution for every workplace. Research shows staff are happier when their surroundings are comfortable. And with HSS Hire's range of fans, air conditioners and coolers, you can transform hot and stuffy into cool and calm. Drop into your local HSS, weak branches nationwide in Dublin, Waterford, Cork, Limerick and Galway and get up to 50% off your first hire. HSS Hire, you're better equipped. 
In a world where they said it couldn't be done, the impossible has been achieved. They've taken the perfect chicken breast sandwich and made it even perfecter. Uh, more perfect. Uh, uh, really, really better. How did they do this? Uh, could I have bacon and cheese on that, please? That's right. A little extra sizzle is now in store. Supermax new chicken breast sandwich. The best just got better with bacon and cheddar. Have a great evening with itsforwomen.ie. Great value car insurance on the web, on demand, on the go. Itsforwomen.ie. It's always on hand. It's always online. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Now then, welcome back. Kevin Coban back in studio. All good. As we mentioned, you were in Castlebar. Mm -hmm. Carried out of the stadium on the shoulders of his people. Now, I walked across the pitch after the game, which was quite nice. You know, yeah, I did. I didn't do the pitch invasion. I just waited 10 minutes and then I had my own pitch invasion, so it was nice, yeah. Nice, yeah. So uh, we're going to hear, we're just going to round off this hour by hearing some of the reaction from the various participants. James Horan here, who's, geez, had a busy summer. Eight of nine weeks now, if they want to go all the way yeah. here. This has um, been something else. So James Horan here, he was talking to Oshin Langan, amongst others, and uh, started off by just summing up that performance against Donegal. Yeah, I thought the application and work rate was was um, was superb right, right through. Um, the turnovers we won in the first half and the tackles that guys put in. Uh, we didn't get the return that we should have, so that, that's, al that's always a concern, you know, going into a second half and you knew Donegal were going to come at you, so they did. I thought they got a, they got a soft free or two and a penalty to, to get them into it. Um, but we responded very well. I thought, you know, Andy Moore and even Kevin McLaughlin, Fergie Bowl and James Turkham, when they came on, I, I, I thought they were very strong for us and gave us a, gave us an out ball. So uh, we're delighted overall with the with, with the effort and, and the win. We, we, we went under pressure in the second half, as, as we knew we would. But I, I thought, you know, you know Shea marshaled it very well. Chris Barrett and the guys at the back were, were very composed on the ball and uh, just kept kept doing, you know, the right things or what we think is the right things. And we got there in the end. We, we rushed a couple of shots in the first half. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, when we probably had a bit more time or maybe one more pass, so it was maybe a bit of excitement, uh, pressure, all those kind of things. What was the most pleasing thing, your kind of physical edge tonight, the fact that you were able to turn over Donegal and blast them around the middle? Uh, look, when you when guys have that, you know, when you have 15 guys and the, the, the six guys that came on with, with, with that, with that focus and that effort, it's it's um, it's, it's great to see, and it's, uh, it was, uh, some of their some of the tackling and, and work rate was, was was inspiring to be honest, and, and, and they, were, they were superb. Is there a worry about the very short turnaround now to the semi-final? No, we don't worry about that stuff. There's no point. Um, we just we, we'll we'll train probably once this week, and, and we'll head to Dublin next next Friday whenever it is, and look forward to the game. What do you need to do better? In the next game, that than you did tonight. I think our our return from the amount of possession that we that we had, uh, or the tur our turnovers with the turnovers we won were, were superb. But we, we as I said, we rushed some of the shots. We 14 wides, I think, in the first half. So that, that's that's too many. So we'll work on that. Yeah, there he is. So I mean, he says they're not going to worry about the tight turnaround. That doesn't mean it's not going to be a factor. Mm. You'd be better placed than most. I mean, what seven eight weeks out of um, eight nine weeks? Kind of a, they've had one two week break in the midst of yeah. this massive run. They're amateurs, so it's not like you and the lads going home for a nice rest after training yeah, to true. work and do their bits and even they train once this week and Friday is trip up to Dublin kind of day they won't do much that day so that's a big worry for them you know against the Dublin team who've had their feet up and were able to play um, a second string team effectively yeah. at the weekend I think the two week break certainly helped them you could see physically they, they, they certainly looked well I would say the, the performance of, of Saturday was a step up beyond yeah they did produce all season, and that, and, and I think it did help with the two-week break. Yeah. So now the worry is they re revert to time. regress again. Yeah. No, but I, I, I think that that is a level that they've hit though now, and it's almost as if yeah, I know that the turnover is not great, but get enough nutrition, everything, yeah. just get yourself right. Everyone knows how to do that now. Is it more the knocks? Someone who's got a dodgy ankle, someone who's got a dodgy. <laughs> yeah, something. and they have no, had the injuries right. over the, over the summer as well. I mean, the the level that someone like Paddy Durkin played at the weekend because of the injury that he'd had and forced him out over yeah. a few weeks, he'd obviously trained a little bit and got himself right. The level that he shot was was incredible. Yeah. Seamus O'Shea as well hadn't played. It was was his first start against Meath. The level that he got to was incredible. That's, mm. that, that's, that was one of his best performances I've seen in, in a number of years one from, from Seamus O'Shea. Brilliant, absolutely fabulous. And and, and alongside his brother Aidan, the, the two of them were, were, were absolute fantastic. Yeah, they did great. Yeah, you mentioned Aidan, so uh, Oshin Langan also on the scene speaking to Aidan O'Shea at full time. Aidan O'Shea, Mayo midfielder, all I can say after that occasion in that game is wow. Yeah, it's, uh, I suppose it's hard to kind of 
figure what it's like uh, when you're in the middle of the battle but um, yeah I'd say when you look back on it or when you're in the crowd I'd say it was something to behold but um, yeah look I knew the Mayo and Donegal fans are come out in, in their thousands and uh, it's a pity that maybe some others couldn't get in the door today but uh, massive uh, occasion massive crowd and great atmosphere to play and I'm delighted to come out on the right side of it When you've needed to you have delivered yet again how have you come up with such a performance? Um, look we've, we've got players we've had a lot of players down all year we've had you know Tom Harrison back in the dressing room today uh, Matty back in the dressing room today Paddy back you know all year we've had three or four go down and again today you know Jason Gardy gone down and hopefully he's okay uh, look a serious injury and there's that kind of mentality in the group you know we've had big players go down and other fellas have stepped up and that's you know testament to the squad and what we've done over the league and through the winter you know look we're by, by my own means to finish article and we know that but we've blooded a lot of young fellas I think we've played 38 players from league to championship and that's very impressive and um, I think you're seeing the fruits of it throughout the championship and to be honest we back ourselves anytime we go out on the pitch and we've got good footballers and that's what you get over there and from you what an incredible game for you your work rate in the middle of the pitch is phenomenal you'll be aware there's lots of debate about where you should play what you do on the pitch but I think tonight you did your job to quote another great coach um, yeah look um, I know there's always a debate about where I should play or whether I'm playing well or not and to be honest with you I don't, I don't really care no debate pay. tonight you played well uh, and no debate for the season being honest I don't pay, I don't pay too much attention to it you know I've got the back end of the group and the back end of James and whatever role I've been given to do I've always tried to do it to the best of my ability um, I'm too long in the tooth now to, to worry about that stuff but yeah look I, 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 things went well tonight and um, you know we've got to dust ourselves down and get, get ready for next weekend he did an interesting interview during the week where he was saying there was a period in his career where he really just wasn't enjoying it yeah. too much speculation too much talk about him and he seems to be in a good spot now but he, this he, season he's been Mayo's best he? player yeah. Mayo's best player this year but arguably his best ever season he's going to need to be very good next week he is this week well, you know, I, I, again at the weekend, you know, there, there was there was talk. I think was it the, the Kerry game that he would miss the Kerry game as it was um, struggling with with injury, mm. and managing your knocks. Manage you mentioned it before. Yeah. Managing yourself more than anything else is getting yourself prepared for the game. But it is he will be he will be key. If Mayo to win the game, he will be the key player. Yeah. Michael Murphy's been brilliant all year. He had Lee Keegan following him around. <laughs> I was watching the game, Joe, honestly. Keegan, Lee Keegan wasn't watching the game at times. He wasn't even watching the ball. He was just stood on Murphy, yeah. just looking at Murphy the whole time. Wherever he went. It was, and he's the best in the business to do it, isn't he? Yeah. It was just a great watch for spells, just watching Keegan, what he was doing to yeah. disrupt Murphy. And, of course, then Michael Murphy went full forward in the, in the second. I think it was just to get away from him, you know. And I'd say so. Uh, just to finish up then on the weekend, you didn't see the dublin Tyrone game. You were no, I was, I was at Wembley, yeah. Missed it. Hard going. Was it? Yeah. Tim McConley back though. Beyond that, really hard going. So um, here's Stephen Doyle. He was there on the scene talking to Jim Gavin at full time. Jim Gavin, Dublin manager. Um, you get played a lot of players there who maybe haven't had much game time this summer. So were you impressed by anybody in particular? I think, I think overall, uh, Stephen is just a very, very comprehensive team performance. Um, if it, it's no surprise to us. We, we see the guys perform really well in training. Um, you know, they love playing for Dublin. They, 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 they love playing in front of, the, of, of Dublin supporters. We had a fantastic crowd again here again from Dublin today. It's um, they're just phenomenal, phenomenal fans. And, and uh, every time we take to the field to represent them, we're just so privileged that we can come away to performance and, and, and thankfully with two points today. They gave a lot of love to Jeremy Connolly, who came back to the starting lineup today. You you gave him a warm handshake yourself there, despite the black cards, whatever happened there. But um, do you think that's going to be good for Jeremy's own conf- self confidence? Uh, listen, we, 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 like any player, if they're performing well in training games, we, we, we'll give them the slots, and, and uh, there's no exceptions to that. Jeremy loves Dublin football, Dublin GA. The players and myself love him, and, and he's a, he's been an outstanding servant, and, and you know has contributed an awful lot in, the, in recent uh, recent weeks since he's been back with us. So um, yeah, we're just glad to get over today's game, and our focus now shifts to next weekend. Are you frustrated? You only have a six-day turnaround. No, I think it's fair enough. But every team has, has the same challenges, uh, so we just get on with it. They don't quite have a six-day turnaround. Most of those Dublin players, big advantage. There's no point saying otherwise. Mm. It's good to see Jeremy Connolly back. Contrasting opinions. I've listened to various people on whether or not he'll play. Mm. on Saturday some people I heard someone say he might start and I've heard he won't be in the 26 yeah. and everything in between that remains to be seen Jim Gavin can certainly name an interesting dummy team yeah it is yeah. give Lee Keegan something to think about will I mark Conley again or will mm. I mark Kilkenny or what's going to happen so um, well I presume it will be Kilkenny but uh, Conley's back and that's a nice little fill up for, uh, for them you're on BBC on Saturday you're not going to get to watch this match this is heartbreaking oh god you're a man who trekked in here through the months of February and March, having gone to all Mayo's league games, 
<laughs> Morgan's here is going to the semi-final. <laughs> You're the glory hunter, cool. aren't you? I sure. I, was, I, I got on to my dad and my mum. I was like, it's about the time we tend to pitch in. <laughs> we go. <laughs> I'll sort of the time gutted. I generally am uh, absolutely tough. gutted. And you I should, can't. You should have known better. I'm you should have known better. No, do you know I? I what are you doing? What are you I've doing? got a certain day to block. Don't say final score. Book into I have to, yeah, you have to. The, the BBC have announced this week all the new pundits and everything, and they're trying to get everyone in across the weekend. So, no, no I, I have to do it. I have to do it. And I'm, you know, it's, it's great. So, it's on great final do, score, who's presenting? Uh, it'd be Jason Mohammed, yeah. When Jason turns to you and, Kev's and, and says, Kev, goal there in the Watford game. And you're looking off at a different screen in the distance and turn to him blankly. I'm going to make sure that that's Sorry. on the floor. I'm making sure it's on the floor. Sorry, we'll be on Jason, what? Yeah, we'll be on air till, till half five. So at first half an hour of that game, I'm going to make sure that that's uh, where I can see it. Or it's either that or if someone sees an iPad on the telly, I'll definitely I'll have it on the iPad there, yeah. Not since Chris Kamara was not watching what was going on in the game, will the reports be so poor? <laughs> yeah, look, Jason, this one could go either way. Um, <laughs> oh, fit, the stats say this. <laughs> <laughs> Any standout players? Ah. <laughs> they're all at it. They're, they're all, all at it. it. Yeah, you know, all... typical, typical first day of the season. Yeah, I'd say. Oh, know, that's God. cruel. That's cruel. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it is. I'll, I'll try and get back. I'll maybe get the second half. Get in the back pub. for the final. I get back for the second half in the pub. Yeah, make, that's it. That's make the final. The ult ultimate optimist. Yeah, I get back for the final. You get yeah. Dublin Kerry in the final. Football shows on the way. Back in uh, just a couple of minutes time. Hey everybody, this Thursday OTB Sports Radio is going live for 17 hours uninterrupted. That's non-stop, Nathan. That's right, Chair. 7 a.m. to midnight, we're going to be launching our Premier League coverage with our very own Deadline Day special. We'll have new shows every two hours. With the very biggest and best names in football coverage that you've come to know and love from off the ball. We're going to get stuck into the new football season, keep you up to date with all the latest news and transfers. Where can you hear it, Chair? You can get us on the Go Loud app or offtheball.com forward slash radio. Off the ball on News Talk. So, how much do I owe you? Nothing. Hmm, sounds too good to be true. Here, take my watch. Really? You don't have to, sir. Uh, you drive a hard bargain. All right then. My watch, uh, my hat, uh, and my favourite rugby shirt. Uh, take it or leave it. But, sir, it's free. What? Your PRSI contribution entitles you to a free eye test at Specsavers and glasses from our 59 euro range. Oh, I'd better put my clothes back on. Let's face it, the Irish summer has serious commitment issues. It's always late, disappears for weeks at a time and consistently breaks its promises. But not us. At Electric Ireland, we're committed to giving you an 8.5% saving on your gas and electricity year after year after year after year. Visit electricireland.ie forward slash join for the kind of commitment you deserve. Estimated annual bill €1,736. Average consumption, urban 24-hour, discounted unit rate, standing charge, PSO levy and carbon tax. Residential, dual fuel, direct debit and online billing. Terms and conditions apply. See electricireland.ie slash EAB. Rated 1st of April 2019. Subject to change. Bruce Bedding, one of Ireland's leading bookmakers. With best odds guaranteed on UK and Irish horse racing, Bruce Betting has you covered. And with the Bruce Betting app, we're always giving you more. T's and C's apply. Bruce Betting, in-store, online, and now on your phone. Over 18s, please gamble responsibly. See dunlouis.net. The Off The Ball Open tees off in Abu Dhabi this November 17th to 23rd. Join us with return flights from Dublin, five nights in a four-star hotel, golf on two championship courses, gala awards dinner, Peter Larry Golf Clinic and a live off-the-ball roadshow, all for just €1,750. Kevin Kilban and Kieran Donaghy will be there too. The Off the Ball Open, Abu Dhabi this November. Book by August 18th to avail of this early bird offer at CassidyTravel.ie. Deposit of €250 Euro required, terms and conditions apply. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Uh, welcome back. So you can podcast any of tonight's best bits. We had Lou DiBella in studio with Joe Ward talking to Andy Lee and uh, Ronan Mullen at half past seven. We've just uh, finished our GA hour. You can get Billy Joe Padden and Kieran Donaghy in the usual places. Uh, Kev is along for the football show next. He was at Wembley at the weekend, so we'll talk to him about that. Uh, Harry Maguire going to Manchester United. A few other bits and pieces as well. So uh, we are back. First football show of the new season is coming up in just a few moments. Join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. 
at Experts Electrical Stores, our new back to school catalog is extra clever. It's bursting with brilliant deals on Apple, Samsung, Lenovo, Asus and more. Tablets, iPads, laptops, MacBooks, phones and accessories. With savings of up to 40%, shop smarter for back to school at your local Expert Electrical Store or visit expert.ie today. Eight Yard presents the Wine and Cheese Festival August 8th to the 11th in the Ivy Gardens in the heart of Dublin City. Get ready to taste, eat, talk and dance over the weekend with lots of great wines and plenty of artisan and farmhouse cheese. With Greenman Wines, Latitude 51, Wine Lab, Wines Direct and cheese from Sheridan's Corleggi and loads more. This is a festival 